the inauguration. Yeah, I think uh, that's very historic. I think it's uh, it's been a 150 plus year tradition of, of the previous or oh, the outgoing president congratulating the incoming president. Um, and so I think uh, it just sends a message that uh, till this day, uh, President Trump just has not accepted the the transition and more importantly, the electoral loss that he suffered in November. Um, and I think it's going to perhaps um, you know, just make it a little bit more difficult in the immediate from a governance perspective uh, for Joe Biden's administration to you know, to get the support of the majority of Americans uh, because of the fact that the president does have, you know, more than 74 million Americans voted for him. So uh, the fact that he hasn't lent that um, um, support to the Biden administration, I think is that's historic just in and of itself. So President Trump said there was going to be a peaceful transition of power, but he never actually conceded, right? That's correct. And so that's why it's very difficult when you hear um, you know, uh, elected officials and party officials talk about unity and bringing the country together. I know that's been um, Biden's priority. In fact, that's why he was elected. Uh, it, it, you know, it's very difficult to uh, to make such requests when you don't concede what has actually happened. And what, unfortunately, because of the inability to concede, we saw what happened uh, on the on January six, uh, and so. I think what the Biden administration needs to do is um, this is how it's going to be. And he just needs to look forward and focus and deliver a strong message to the American public this afternoon that he is hitting the ground running. His priorities are in order, which is to uh, address the uh, COVID situation, um, really, you know, because it's been ravaging our country. We also connected to that. He has to address economically how he plans to put in place measures that can help us as a country uh, uh, regenerate our, our economy, create jobs, put money in people's pockets. And also, I think just in terms of trying to bring uh, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party together uh, so that they can work on uh, governing. And there has to be a lot of compromise, so therefore it's going to require the cooperation of both sides of the political aisle. What about the trans the traditions that we are not going to be seeing? In particular, President Trump has not left a letter for Joe Biden when he takes office. Yeah, well, you know, everything that he's done so far since since uh, being elected to office has been very kind of um, unorthodox. So here we go. This is a good example of that as well. Again, I think it's 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 about just um, traditions and norms. And in this case, we're talking about an exchange of political pleasantries. Even if it may seem as trivial, uh, it's not because I think from a visual standpoint, I think it's very, very important for Americans and particularly our young, our, our young population to be able to, to, to see, in fact, that, you know what, no matter your differences, no matter how much you disagree, even though you're diametrically opposite on policy issues, that, you know, there you have to uh, accept kind of responsibility and you have to accept defeat and this and that happens in everybody's life at some point uh, but you have to move on and i think um you know i, I so i think that that's sending a, a very uh, negative message uh, but again i think that biden just and his administration just cannot get distracted by that but it's very unfortunate because it, i think it's also uh when you write the letter when you uh just like when obama offered trump the you know the, the the opportunity also to come to the Washington to accept right the defeat, despite the fact that, you know, uh, the whole birther issue was, I think, a reason enough to not do that. But Obama understood that this is larger than him. It's, it's larger than the, the Democratic Party when he was in office. This is about America. This is about our democratic process. And this is uh, it's important for us to to show not only our country, but also uh, uh, foreign nations that this is democracy in practice. This is how an exchange of peaceful power occurs uh, and as a country that uh, preaches that uh, from a global perspective, I think that, um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate for us. But again, we can't get distracted by that because we, we have a lot of issues to deal with going forward as a nation. Mr. Dominguez, I wanted to let everybody know that we do still have your voice, your interview happening live right now, but we also have a live picture of Marine One arriving at the South Lawn of the White House. So that's currently what I have up on our broadcast right now, because we're all about these live pictures and everybody's interested in seeing history in the making. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, we just aired a story about the um, 
transition to power in terms of first ladies as well. Let's talk about that tradition that's not occurring. Melania Trump is not giving Dr. Jill Biden a gift. Yeah, again, this is a, it, it, it may seem trivial for a lot of people, but it's just, uh, again, just an, uh, you know, politi- an exchange of political pleasantries. I think, again, it, 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 to exchange a gift means that, you know, you are welcoming, ushering in a new family, you're ushering in a new administration, and that, you know, she uh, s- supports uh, Joe Biden as the next uh, first lady. And, uh, but the fact that she's not doing that, I think, again, just, uh, sends a, a rancorous uh, message, right? That um, that they're not okay with what has occurred. Um, so I, again, I think it's um, um, not good. But what can we do? What sort? Do you know historically what sort of gifts are given? Is it like a fruit basket, flowers? What's normally exchanged? Uh, just it, it, it ornament. It could be a Christmas ornament. It could be um, just a simple uh, uh, what. Uh, something just not not very nothing to awe at it's just more just again just a recognition i think uh that you know again i'm i'm uh here to accept the the new transition and that um you know this is just a gesture of 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 goodwill it's essentially that's what it is a gesture of goodwill so i don't think the actual gift matters so much do you have any predictions for what's going to happen to President Trump and Melania Trump now that they are leaving the White House? And matter of fact, they're coming down here to Florida. What do you think's next for them? Well, I think for them, I think he's going to try to remain relevant politically. Uh, he does going to have a, you know, some financial issues that he's going to have to uh, address, uh, particularly with the um, uh, the uh, Southern District Attorney of New York, even though he's not residing there, but there's going to be some deal with lawsuits coming on that front. Um, so, um, you know, I, I think he's going to have to deal on one front with that, but at the same time, he's going to try to remain relevant in um, party politics, particularly within the Republican Party. Melania Trump, even as a first lady, we saw that she was very low key. Uh, she didn't seem to like the spotlight as, as, as much as previous uh, first ladies. So for her, I think she's just going to attend to raising her son, Baron, and um, attending to her, her immediate family needs. All right, All Mr. Right. Dominguez, thank you so much for joining us here on News Now from Fox. And hopefully we'll be talking with you again soon in the future about politics.